Let's take a look at Sarah and her Border Collie Rook running this course at 16 inches. The course was designed by Steve Schwartz over at agilitynerd.com. Let's take a look at it full speed. Alright, and now let's break it down. First, we notice that the course runs differently for very large dogs who are jumping in at 26 inches and the smaller dogs who are jumping in at 12 and 16. Rick's kind of a hybrid in between a uh, medium height dog. So first we've got a straight line, one, two, and then to the back side of three. You can handle uh, this 270 challenge here from either end we opted to handle it from this side, but you can also do a front cross on this side. In either case, what you want to do is put your dog on a straight line into the tunnel. Uh, handlers who don't have as much confidence in their dog and who are afraid they might take this off-course tunnel right here will often swing their dog wide. They'll, if they stay on the inside, they'll pull, pull them in and then kind of send them out toward the tunnel. Or if they opt to do it from the front cross side here, you'll see the handler again take a rounded path so that the dog avoids the off course trap. But in order to be as efficient as possible, I think you want to create as tight a line as you can toward the tunnel. And Sarah does a pretty good job here. Once the dog is in the tunnel, the handler has plenty of time to get out in front for a front cross. So if we take a look here, and check Sarah's timing. You see that as Rook is taking off, Sarah is already fully into the front cross, so her timing is good. I think her position is good. And if you look at her footwork, you've got the left, the right, the left, and then her fourth step, that power step, is to the outside of the wing, cueing the 270 maneuver here. As Rick comes through the push through here, or what you'd call another 270, you see that Sarah is making use of deceleration. She's leaned back, coming to a stop as Rick comes into the takeoff zone. So with this, Rook should know that she's probably headed back somewhere in this direction as opposed to driving forward in this direction. And you see that's the case. Now Sarah's leaning forward, making good use of acceleration. Big stride. And here again you see a contrast. Now she's leaned back and taking small steps. So as Rook comes into the takeoff zone, Rook can accurately predict a tight turn is coming on this wing list. This is a spot where you'll see many dogs uh, novice dogs and very large dogs, especially on a wing list, take a really wide turn here. But you can control this turn with some deceleration and you see we get a very nice wrap here. And again, Sarah's going to use deceleration here at the wing of the jump to create another very nice turn. And this is important because this is probably the most interesting part of the course, or one of the most interesting parts of the course. You see that Rook lands right here, but we found that the larger 26-inch dogs were landing more over here. And the issue becomes the next jump. So if you take a look at this wingless jump, which is next, if your dog lands long, there was a risk that they would take the backside of it and take it as a 270 rather than straight on, which is what we want. And you can see that even Rook comes very close to the line between 270 and straight on. So with the smaller dogs, we didn't need any additional handling maneuvers. But for the larger dogs, you might need a throttle or RFP arm or some other way to take them off of this line and convert them to this line. 
so that their path might look a little different as well. The spacing here for a larger dog was very, very tight because of how they land here. So you see again, Sarah's combining deceleration with her front cross cue here, turning toward the dog. So Brooke's going to get a nice tight turn here. If your front cross is too late, the dog is going to go wide because they see this blue jump off course over here. Something really important for the front cross, if you time it well but you're out of position, meaning you're back here, if we take a look, Sarah's able to get to about here. If you were stuck further back here because your dog was uh, much faster than you were, then when your dog takes this jump, they would be forced around your body and you'd lose a lot of time. So you can see that once the dog comes around this jump, you want to give them a straight shot to this wingless jump. And that if you are doing your front cross out in the middle of the course, your dog is going to have to take a much longer, wider path. So I think Sarah does a pretty good job of staying out of Rook's way here. Again, 270 move. And Sarah's accelerating with the big steps. So you can see Rook move in extension. And as Rook comes into the takeoff zone, Sarah is trying to slow down. She can't quite get there. So her deceleration key is a little bit weak. You see that Rook takes off a little bit early. And that's going to give you a slightly wide turn. Not too bad, though. And you see that Rook lands facing the correct way. Sarah opts for the rear cross here. Once Rook is committed to the jump, you see Sarah diving forward cutting the line so that by the time Rook lands, Sarah's already caught up and is next to the dog. So the dog knows very clearly they're going this, this direction. The next thing you'll see is Sarah throw on the brakes here. So another strong deceleration cue. So Rook knows we're not going long, but instead we're wrapping tight. And you see Sarah catch Rook with the throttle. And that brings Rook to the inside of this jump as opposed to the outside. So Rook knows she's going to take it this way rather than this way. Once Rook has crossed this imaginary line between these two jumps, Sarah opens back up right there. So even though it's a wingless, the dog knows the correct way to take the jump. And the wingless jumps were uh, a challenge here, especially for the larger dogs. But a very well-designed course, several very interesting spots.